Are you a family caregiver? Are you caregiving for someone who can no longer take care of themselves? Are you overwhelmed? This is Caregiver Solutions Info with Marsha Teal. Marsha will be hosting an hour of true stories and information, tips and updates of the latest research and necessary information in the caregiving field, focusing on you, the family caregiver. An Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert, Marsha has 15 years of hands-on experience at Arden Courts, a leader in assisted living dementia communities here in the U.S. Marsha covers everything you need to know as a family caregiver, especially if you care for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease or other related dementia or chronic illness. If you have a friend or relative that is also a family caregiver, call them now. They won't want to miss a minute and let them know they can watch on caregiversolutions.info. And they can listen on WNN 1470 AM in South Florida or nationally on the iHeartRadio app. Now, sit back, relax, and learn from our host, Marsha Teal, as she brings information to you that may just be the caregiving solution you need. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Caregiver Solutions Info. I'm Marsha Teal, and I'm happy that you could join us today. We are here to bring you the caregiver, the family caregiver, the unpaid family caregiver, lots of great information and tips to help your caregiving uh, journey to be a little bit easier. We interview lots of great professionals talking about everything about Alzheimer's, dementia, things related to that that would help you. We also interview caregivers and sometimes we in also interview uh, people that actually have memory loss. So we cover the gamut and I'm glad you're here whether you're listening on the local radio live here out of Boca Raton, Florida or you're watching live stream on the internet at www.caregiversolutions.info. So I'd like to start out by saying that if you have a question or a comment or a suggestion for something that you'd like to see that we could talk about on our show that might help you, just give me an email, send me a line, let me know what it is, and we'll be glad to address that for you. The email address for me is delray at arden which is a-r-d-e-n dash courts c-o-u-r-t-s dot com so it's delray at arden dash courts dot com so i spoke to rosa well actually um rosa um she got a hold of me and we talked for a few minutes and rosa wanted to share with me that she just loves the 36 hour day book that arden courts gives free to caregivers who watch the show and Rosa is a caregiver along with her sister and they share caregiving duties for their mother. And Rosa shared that when she started reading the 36 hour day book, she was very surprised to find her mother in the pages. In other words, things that she read sounded just like what Rosa's mother was doing, things that she noticed. And in addition to explaining the things that mom did, she also said why mom did it and that was just thrilled to her to know that she wasn't alone that this was common things that her mother was experiencing was common when you're taking care of someone with alzheimer's so rosa just wanted to uh, thank us for the 36 hour day book and it's been a very big help for her and hopefully it will be for you too so if you're a caregiver and you don't have the 36 hour day book I would like to offer it to you as a gift from Arden Courts. This is what it looks like uh, for you that are listening on the radio. Uh, this is the 36 hour day. It's written by Dr. Peter Rabins and Nancy Mace. And it is the best caregiving book uh, because it's in its fifth edition right now, which means it's been around a long time, uh, continually being updated with any new information. It explains the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's. It gives lots of great information, both on the medical side and on the non-medical side. So if you'd like to have this book, just give Arden Courts a call on their toll-free number, which is 888-478-2410, and tell them that you heard about this on the Caregiver Solutions Info Program, and they'll be happy to get your name and your address and make sure that they get a, a book mailed out to you right away. So 
I am happy today to talk about something that a lot of people are very, very passionate about. So when you were a child, did you ever have a dog? I think that um, at some point in our lives, you know, maybe we never owned a dog, but we spent some time with a dog. Uh, a lot of people obviously have children as dogs or dogs as children, uh, and they are their children in their eyes because they are a part of the family. And when you think about it, dogs are very important for lots of different reasons. They are our pets and we have pets because they are special to us and they afford us a lot of pleasure and a lot of company. I remember, you know, a few dogs that I had, but they didn't, um, one of them did not live with us, it belonged to my grandmother and at her house, but every year, uh, when I spent time at my grandmother's house over the summer, I had my little dog and she was mine and I taught her tricks. So her name was Tricky. And that was a special to me. It was very special. She, she was somebody that I could play with. And to this day, I'll never forget Tricky. Um, we also had a poodle. And, you know, you start thinking about your dogs. And I don't think people ever um, quite forget their pets, um, especially if they are um, an animal lover. Um, I have a brother-in-law um, who recently passed away uh, from cancer, and uh, the couple days before he passed away, he was, um, you know, on hospice, and he was talking to me about the dog he used to have, and I said, well, you know, whose dog is that? It was in a picture, and he said, oh, that was my very first dog, and he said, you know, I have a theory, and I said, what's that? He said, I think that when you go to heaven... When you die and you go to heaven, I think your dogs are up there waiting for you. You know, the pets that you had, they're up there waiting for you. And there's, it's, it's just what happens. He said, I thought maybe I'd ever get around to writing a book about that. He said, but I never did. So I said to him, I said, well, what if you have a cat? You know, because I have a cat. I don't have a dog. And he said, well, he said, I think cats would be up in heaven too. You know, that's good. And I said, well, Bob, what would happen if someone didn't have a cat or a dog or they didn't like animals at all? And he looked right at me and he said, well, then they're just going to hell. So <laughs> I love that story for lots of reasons. Um, my brother-in-law passed away a few days after that, but it showed that he still had a sense of humor. And it showed also that he was very, very passionate about the animals in his life. So today we're going to be talking about pet therapy, about our pets, and what our pets can do not only for um, us on an everyday basis, but what pets can do for people that have Alzheimer's, dementia, and memory loss, and how that's going to benefit them. So you don't want to miss this, and when we come right back from our first commercial break, we're going to be talking to two ladies that do this for a living, and they are wonderful, and we're going to have um, introductions um, with a special guest, too. So don't, don't go away. We'll be back in a minute, and uh, you'll get to see who the special guest is. Arden Courts is not just a place to live. It's a place to call home. Residential living combined with quality caregiving. This is the philosophy behind Arden Courts. Communities created exclusively for individuals with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia who would benefit from a safe and structured environment. For additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides, call 888 478 2410 to locate a community nearest you. Inquire about our educational seminars, resource library, or support groups, or simply feel free to ask questions you may have about Alzheimer's and related dementias. At Arden Courts, we know, we understand, and we can help because memory care is all we do. Remember, call 888 478 2410 for additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides. Make First Choice your first choice for home health care. First Choice is state certified for Medicare covered services such as medical treatment and rehabilitation. Qualified health care professionals come to your home and work closely with your doctor to build a care plan designed to get you back on your feet as soon as possible. Founded and operated by registered nurses, First Choice Home Health is dedicated to providing exceptional home health care. 
Their highly skilled medical professionals have the knowledge and ability to provide patients quality care. Call First Choice Home Health at 561-296-2770. That's 561-296-2770. And tell them you want them as your first choice. You are listening to your host, Marsha Teal, an Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. And we're back and we're going to be talking about pet therapy today. And I'm so excited. Joining me here today in the studio, I have some special guests. First of all, from Canine Assisted Therapy is Joanne Jurgle, who's the executive director and co-founder. Hi, Joanne. Hi, how are you? And also joining her is Anasi Fernandez. And Anasi <laughs> is a volunteer and program coordinator with Canine Assisted Therapy. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. We are so but, happy to be here. Good. I'm excited <laughs> because um, I'm going to let you introduce our third guest, uh, our four-legged guest right here in the studio with us who is this it's the mish this is misha she is well misha come on over there. <laughs> give me a high five high five misha oh treat that's okay good girl misha this is misha she's two years old two she, years old mm -hmm. and she's one of the pet therapy she's she's dogs. my dog and she passed the therapy evaluation earlier this year hi misha and she's been volunteering at nursing homes oh there she is there she, there she is, is. Hi. Hi, me, girl. <laughs> you know, she looks a lot like my dog, Tricky, that I just talked about that I had as a little girl in West Virginia at my grandmother's house. And I love that dog. That's it, great. It just brought back a memory. When I saw Misha before we came on the air, it brought back a memory of my, my dog. And I think that's what pets do. You know, they, they do afford us a lot of wonderful memories. You want your treat? Here it is. You going to do a trick for it? Oh, oh. <laughs> all right, there you go. <laughs> so for people that are listening on the radio, you can't see Misha, but she's beautiful. She's two years old, like mm -hmm. Anasi says, and she's brown and black. Uh, is she a certain breed? She's a, she comes from the herding group. So she's uh, she's a mixed breed, but definitely has some healer in her or some hurting. Okay, hurting and breed. about how many pounds is she? She's thirty five. Thirty five yep. pounds. Well, she is so cute, yeah. so adorable. I'm glad that you brought her to join <laughs> Thank us you. today. Thank you for having us. Um, it's very appropriate mm -hmm. that uh, Misha is here, and uh, I want to go back um, to you, Joanne. This is your company. You you co-founded this company, and tell me why you did it and what happened that gave you the incentive to create a pet therapy company? Well, my last dog, Ch or Kona, sorry, he's a golden retriever. He passed away um, about 11 years ago. Aww. And when he passed away, I wished I had spent more time with him. You get up, you go to work, you come home, you spend an hour or two at night, you go to bed, get up, do it all over again. And I said... You know, my next dog, I am going to do something where I can give back to the community, but also be with my dog more. So I researched it, and the first thing that I found was service dogs. So I'm like, okay, I want my dog to be a service dog. And I contacted a service dog organization and said, I want to, be a, I want to get a dog, a puppy, I want to be a service dog. And the lady was very nice, and she said, well, what disability do you have? I said, I don't have a disability well, why do you want a service dog? And I said, because I want to go and visit people and bring joy and happy and smiles. And she said, honey, you don't want a service dog because a service dog you would raise, then you would give that dog up and that dog would go to somebody that needs it, that has a disability. As a helper, like As somebody helper. who's blind. Exactly. Right. I said, oh no, if I raise the dog, I want to keep it. And right. she goes, what you want to look into is a therapy dog. So I went and I researched and I got my, my dog, Kona. We went to all schools and training and we were bonded and we, we went and became certified with an organization, a local organization, and we volunteered in <clears throat> um, nursing facilities, all different facilities. We went and visited with children, but there was just something something missing with the organization. 
you had so a good time and I you had a good enjoyed time, it. But, but I was noticing that some of the dogs that were passed weren't passed. They weren't as as attention seeking. Attention seeking, mm-hmm. or they didn't enjoy it. They weren't enjoying it. Okay, and maybe Chance they maybe I, they were dogs that didn't like people so much. Exactly. I mean that does so happen. I mm-hmm. said something, and they were like, "Oh no, they wanted the numbers. They wanted to just pass as many as they could." And I'm like, "No, that's not what I want." I went searching for an organization that cared about the the dogs, that mm-hmm. cared about the populations we served, that cared about me, the volunteer, and I couldn't find one. So my co-founder, Deborah, and I, we decided to start our own, and we researched and researched for a year on different organizations all across the country, and we came up with canine-assisted therapy, and we have high standards. Our volunteers have to go through a criminal two, uh, um, level two criminal background check. No other or organizations do that, require that. Wow. Just like uh, caregivers in facilities exactly. have to go through background exactly. checks. So exactly. your volunteers yes. should too, because yes. they're going to be in the community, in the nursing home, in the assisted living. It, it kind of makes sense exactly. because they're you know strangers and you want to be sure that you know, you're know you bringing people in that you could trust. Yes, That's exactly. a great idea. Yeah, yeah. So that's for the, the human, the, the animal portion. We They have to go through and get their canine good citizen certification, which is training, it's obedience. Then they have to go through a temperament and, and a, um, temperament personality evaluation to make sure they're seeking the attention, to make sure they want to be doing it. Really? Now, how, how do you test for that? That's I'm curious. We have an AC can take this because oh, she's been sure. she's been doing the evaluation. <laughs> All yeah. right, and AC, how yeah. does that happen? So the most important thing for us to to see is that the dog wants the attention of the person. Okay, so like you said, not uh, not every dog likes likes people, and that one of the main things that we look for in the evaluation is when we expose them to a large amount of people, that they are actively okay with them being petted being rough handled not everybody approaches dogs correctly um so we definitely test for different types of people you know rough handling the dog making sure that the dog is okay handles correct correct. make sure that they're okay with either a soft or a a kind of a harder handle Mm -hmm. Uh uh, uh-huh because you certainly don't want them to bite somebody correct Mm -hmm. and then we at that point we see what the dog does if the dog's so she, right now she's whining she wants somebody she wants to pet attention. her come here right. Nisi. So, i'll pet well, you well i'm an ac <laughs> yeah. oh sorry i mean, I mean misha <laughs> this is misha <laughs> okay i'll pet you you have a nice ponytail yeah. i'll pet your ponytail um, so, misha come here no she, wonder she didn't yeah, come when i called her she's getting her attention so if if the dog doesn't do that if the dog just either avoids the person or gives us certain signs like uh, what's called a whale eye, where they look away or a lot of showing teeth. Obviously, that would be a no-no, growling. Um, you know, there are some dogs that don't, they don't do well with, with people approaching them, especially strangers. So we make sure that we expose the dog to different people, um, wearing even wearing different things. Our evaluation has a portion where uh, people wear fake beards or fake uh, stethoscopes or lab coats or hats because when you go into a facility, you never know what you're going to run into wow. and that is that is especially important to us because of our our volunteers have given us feedback you know as to what they've experienced so whatever they experience we added to the evaluation so for example we had one volunteer that was went into a hospital room and the doctor bent over with a stethoscope and the dog you know kind of pulled back and almost started growling and it wasn't because the the dog didn't like the person it was just that it was afraid of the equipment right so then we went ahead and added that to our evaluation to kind of test okay now we have to test we have to expose the dog to this to make sure that that's really great so you're exposing them Mm -hmm. to all these different um stimuli that could actually happen Mm -hmm. so that they're familiar with it so that you know if someone um comes up to them that's not familiar in a familiar way that they're not frightened and Mm -hmm. they're okay with it are there some dogs that are better than others for being a pet therapy dog? Breeds. Are you talking uh, about breeds? Yeah, or? the breed. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you have your standard 
goldens, golden retrievers and your standard labs and things like that, um, you know, that kind of breed and your golden doodles that have a really good disposition already. Um, however, that's not to say we've had goldens not pass. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, we've... It's really, yeah. it doesn't... I can't say that one breed is better than the other. Right. Um, yeah. I really can't. I don't have, see many pit bulls as being uh, pet therapy dogs. Do they ever? We have, we have, we have pit bulls that are therapy dogs. You do? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And, and Staffordshire Terriers, um, they are, you know... The media does such a good job of giving a negative connotation right. that they don't, they don't realize they're actually better. They they turn out to be almost sometimes better therapy dogs than than well, some other breeds. Well, isn't it because that's the way they're trained? Yeah. So pit bulls are it, pretty much trained to be nasty in a lot of ways, but they it depends on the owner. It depends on the owner, right? You know? exactly. if they're trained by the yeah. owner, so yeah. they're going to take on a lot of that personality by what yeah. they're exposed to and what they're right. trained. We have Dobermans. We, we have, have Dobermans. We have Shepherds. Shepherds any, German Shepherds. You know, right now, pit bulls are the ones getting the negative connotation, but right. years ago it was a Doberman. Years right. ago it was Shepherd. So it's, even Dalmatians yep. used to be yeah. not a good mm -hmm. breed for Correct. some things. Mm -hmm. You know, were kind of right. in a negative way. Right. You know, and you mentioned. Um, uh, Labradoodles. So, La Labradoodles. Yeah. yeah. What about just a regular poodle, like standard Absolutely. poodles? Absolutely. We or, have mm -hmm. we have a beautiful standard poodle. His name is Bo, and he he just recently passed, and and he's great. Passed I his mean, test. He's passed still his alive. evaluation. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh. Uh, no, he passed the evaluation, and, okay. and he's visiting now. He's visiting a, a nursing facility. So. You yeah. know what I, mm -hmm. I thought was interesting years ago. You know, I've been at Arden Course for 15 years, and. Um, one time um, years ago, we had pet therapy dogs that were greyhounds mm -hmm. and they were retired yes. greyhounds from the racing because yes. yes. down here in South Florida, we have the, we used to have the greyhound racing. I yep. don't know if they still do or not, but if, um, you know, it, it was really interesting to see these, these, these huge, tall, thin yes. yep. dogs were actually rescued from the Greyhound Racing mm -hmm. um, Arena to become pet yes. therapy dogs, and they were wonderful. wonderful. They are great. Yeah, I love yep. Greyhounds. Yeah, yeah they great. were wonderful. So you don't you don't yeah. really have any one particular. It just nope. it just depends. Nope. Um, because we do do pet therapy at, at Arden Courts at yes. all the Arden mm -hmm. Courts throughout the country uh, on a regular basis. You know, I, I know many of them do it at least once a week or several times mm -hmm. a week, depending upon you know who um, is coming in. Because not only do we have um, a, you know your um, wonderful organizations like you throughout the country, nobody like you. I know that you're just specific to Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County. But, you know, in general, you know, pet therapy is something that is all across the country Correct. that benefits everybody. Absolutely. And the Arden Courts really believe in that's a wonderful way to, you know, help the people with dementia because they really relate to that. Awesome. So mm -hmm. we have not only volunteers that come in and we have uh, pet therapists that come in, but a lot of family members yes. that have yeah. their loved ones that live at Arden Courts like to bring their pets. And it's, it's like, well, this is my husband's pet. He lives at Arden Courts. Now, you know, actually, if if the resident could take care of the pet, they could live with them right. at Arden exactly. Courts. But yes. most times they can't, you know, remember to right. always, you know, feed them and take them out for a walk and all that. So the, the spouse, the well spouse would bring them in for a visit and it, it benefits not only the owner and the owner's spouse, but it benefits everybody. everybody. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's just so wonderful to see. I, I just love that so much. That's what we see at the hospitals as well, because we also visit hospitals. And most of the time, while the patient is, you know, not, not conscious, the family member is the one that needs the visit. Um, so that's, that's yeah. always good we to, had, to um, see. In one of the facilities, I would go with my golden retriever, Chance, before he was retired, and we would sit and talk with the patients. And I would talk to the patients and they would pet Chance. And this one lady said, oh, he looks just like the dog that I had when I was little. And I said, really? I said, what was your dog's name? She couldn't remember her daughter's name, her, her grandson's name. She couldn't remember what she ate for breakfast. My dog's name was Wanda. Can't think of what the dog's name was. And I have a picture of him. And she went through her purse and she dug through all of these papers in her purse, and she pulled out this photo, a black and white photo, of a German Shepherd that looked nothing like my Golden Retriever, <laughs> of this German Shepherd, and she said, here's Wanda. She was beautiful. 
she went back to that age when she had Wanda. Yes. She had the most beautiful yeah. smile on her face, and she was so happy for the three minutes that she was able to talk about Wanda. Yes. And the whole time she was talking, she was petting Chance. Yes. The whole time. And it's interesting what you just said, too, because you said that she said that Chance looked like her yes. dog, but when you saw the picture of her dog, it looked nothing like. So the the most important part was it wasn't that the dog looked the same, but what it did, it elicited the feelings yeah, yes. of what that dog afforded yeah. to her. And that's what got her excited. It was Absolutely. the feeling of her remembering what it was like to have a dog and pet it and love it. Mm -hmm. And the feeling was there. And, you know, I always say that with people with dementia, feelings are strong, especially when they can't remember things and when they can't remember names yes. or words. Um, they'll remember feelings and feelings become, I think, more acute. Um, I don't know if there's scientific study for mm -hmm. that, but that's how I feel about it. And I think that uh, your example just now uh, brought that to light that, yes, that was the feeling that she got. Yes. And uh, I love that story. Yeah. It, and it happens every day. We have over 100 volunteers and they go and visit over 75 facilities. Mm -hmm. So every day we have a team going out, reaching 50, 60 people and just bringing out these feelings and snapping them out of their the zone that they're in and bringing them to a happy place. And like I said, it could be for a minute, three minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, it they're happy, they're content, they're smiling, yep. and they look forward to it. Wow. They, they have it on their calendar. Tuesday at 4 o'clock, Maya is going to come and visit. So Tuesday at 3.30, they're in front of their mirror, putting on their lipstick, making yeah. up their hair. Getting ready getting for their dressed. special visitor. They go downstairs yeah. to the lobby or to the common area, and they sit and they wait yeah. for Maya. Oh. And when Maya comes in, the smiles on their faces are, are just, they're priceless. They're priceless. And they just sit, and Maya just sits there, and they pet them, pet her, pet her, and just talk about remember when mm -hmm. and and. It's just, it is just an amazing So it's mutual sight. between the, the dog Absolutely. and, and the person. Absolutely. It's a mutually beneficial for both yep. of them. These dogs know when their purple vest or their purple bandana comes out, they know they're going to visit their friends. That's the yeah. cue, and right? And that's their cue. And they, their tail starts wagging and if they have a tail and their <laughs> ears go and they are ready and they yeah. are out the door and... And it is amazing. That's exciting amazing for them and for the person that they're giving the therapy absolutely. to. And they, absolutely. We Do, see that often. They gravitate towards certain people. And, and this happened um, with me specifically and, and Misha when we were visiting the, the nursing facility. Uh, to, it was a rehab center as well. And, and she would always visit everybody, but she would gravitate towards this one person. And every week we would visit this one person. And, you know, it, it, it got to the point where the staff members knew that Misha went to visit Maria, let's call her. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, and, and so they would welcome, they would welcome and say, oh, Maria's at, in this room today, or Maria's they here. They became best sit, buddies. They would know. And, and at one point, Misha was sitting next to Maria and one of the staff members came in and, and she's, you know, the staff member said, oh, Misha must know. And I said, must, must know what, you know, obviously due to privacy reasons, I can't be asking questions. Right. Uh, we do observe HIPAA and that's one of the, our requirements as well. But it just, an emotion, you know, it touched me too, because she obviously knew something that you know, we didn't know. You mentioned that um, you go into the rehabs, not mm -hmm. just long-term nursing mm -hmm. uh, homes yep. or assisted livings, but I think what you just said about rehabs is pretty cool because I can see where a pet therapy dog mm -hmm. can be motivation absolutely. for a person who's in rehab mm -hmm. to do their exercises. Oh, absolutely. Abs you absolutely. know, if the physical yes. therapist is trying to get them to walk absolutely. or get mm -hmm. them to do their exercises, well, you know, you got to do it or you're not going to get to see Misha because we're, we're going to have to be doing and this and have, you're going to miss her. Yeah, we have so many stories. I mean, uh, we'll, Joanne will talk about one, but, and, you know, like for example, Lacey is one of our star <laughs> volunteers. Visits all, almost three or three times a week um, at a at a at a nursing facility, and 
you know, there was a patient that didn't want to get out of bed. And the only way that he did get out of bed was because Lazy was walking with him down the hallway. There so you it go. Was. So yeah. it, it does work. Yeah. And, and yeah. our brochure picture. It, our brochure picture. Mm-hmm. Um, this was actually their first visit. We, and AC and I were mentoring. We take all of our newbies and we mentor them. We show them how to approach patients. We show them how to talk to patients. Some people don't know how to talk to people. And we show them how to position the dogs. So anyway, we were in the physical therapy room and the physical therapist said, can you come over here? We're like, sure. So Michelle had um, Augie. Michelle on the cover. And we went over and she said, I have been trying to get my patient to sit up straight in his chair for weeks now. He won't do it, and I know he can. And he was really slouched all the way down. Uh huh. So she said, bring the dog, stand directly in front of the gentleman. So she brought the dog, she stood directly in front of the gentleman. And the physical therapist said to the, the man's name, said, Mr. Jones, sit up, there's somebody here to see you. And Mr. Jones, kind of sat up a little bit she said move in a little bit closer she moved in a little closer mr jones all of a sudden like a flower sat back in his chair when he saw augie his head shot up and a big smile came to his face and she said do you want to touch augie and he said yeah and with his left hand it took you know seemed like 10 minutes for his left hand to get up and finally touch augie and when he did, he just, his smile was so beautiful. And we captured it for, somehow we captured it. And that this and that's was the, the actual moment that's that it mo- happened. Oh, wow. That's why I made it on the cover, because we just, couldn't believe we, that we caught it, uh, you know, yeah. as it was happening. We were both like, <gasps> oh, and the therapist was so happy. She said, for weeks, I have been trying to sit him up. Yeah. So the next week, we went back, and we found him, and we visit him every time and he's still you know doing his therapy and he's getting stronger and you know he's on his way wow that's an amazing story i you know i um it just makes sense Mm -hmm. that you know sometimes people that have alzheimer's and dementia they're depressed yes and nothing seems sometimes to perk them up but you bring in a dog right. and they just like you said they bloom they 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 perk up they smile uh, they get in there and you know petting that dog yeah. and it's wonderful to see I just love it and what it does it then it starts them talking to each other right if you first when we first walk into facilities nobody's talking to anybody everybody is just in their own world and you walk in and you start walking around and the dog will get Mary to start talking. Mm-hmm. Well, then Mary will look over and say, she's been sleeping for an hour. You need to go over and wake up June. So you take the dog over to June and June wakes up. So then Mary says to June, I told them to go over and see you. <laughs> so they start their little yeah. talking. But then like five, ten minutes into your visit, Everybody is talking, and there's life in the room. Yeah, yep. and it's and a common. It's they have a, a common denominator mm-hmm. yes. there. Yes, somebody special. And what I love about animals, of course, is they give you unconditional, unconditional. love. Unconditional, no unconditional judgment. love. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we all deserve unconditional love, and not every human being can do that. But dogs certainly can. Absolutely, and that's what's so very, very special about our canine friends. So we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking more about Misha and learning about what her day is like. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Do you need the advice of an elder law attorney, but perhaps find it difficult or overwhelming getting to appointments? The solution is the Elder Law Department. They bring elder law to you by meeting with you in the comfort of your own surroundings to discuss your personal situation and family needs. In practice since 1994, Heidi Friedman is a member of the Elder Law section of the Florida Bar. She and her team help families with issues that include incapacity and estate planning, asset preservation, veterans benefits, and other legal issues that seniors may face. Call the Elder Law Department at 954-383-1143. 954 383 1143. They bring elder law to you. Make first choice your first choice for home health care. 
First Choice is state certified for Medicare covered services such as medical treatment and rehabilitation. Qualified healthcare professionals come to your home and work closely with your doctor to build a care plan designed to get you back on your feet as soon as possible. Founded and operated by registered nurses, First Choice Home Health is dedicated to providing exceptional home health care. Their highly skilled medical professionals have the knowledge and ability to provide patients quality care. Call First Choice Home Health at 561-296-2770. That's 561-296-2770. And tell them you want them as your first choice. You are listening to your host, Marsha Teal, an Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Hi, and we're here talking about pet therapy, and I have very special guests with me today. I have Joanne Jurgle, and I have Anacy mm-hmm. Fernandez, yes. and we have Misha. Misha's down. There she is. <laughs> Brought her up to the camera here. You can see Misha. She's yeah, a pet me. therapy dog, and she's beautiful, and she's so cute, and she's getting a treat right now. From her owner, and uh, thank you, Misha, for doing what you do. Yeah, she's I, great. Yeah, it's wonderful. So you mentioned, Joanne, that you have a hundred volunteers that go throughout the three counties mm-hmm. here in South Florida. Yes, and you visit how many different places every day? We, depending on the day, we have volunteers out every day, reaching 50, 60, 70 different facilities. Wow! Yeah. And each visit one visit that one team will reach about 50 people that's amazing that that yeah. is such a great and you all are nonprofit aren't Correct. you Correct. we are a nonprofit we have two paid staff Anacy and Courtney i am um, the full time volun- the executive director Vol- and volunteering time volunteering <laughs> yes, my time absolutely and um, it's it's all nonprofit it's all donations grants Corporate contributions. And how wonderful that you have a hundred volunteers yes, that want to lucky. give up their oh, yeah. time and, and and serve this way. We have amazing mm-hmm. volunteers and going back to what breed dogs are best, over eighty percent, closer probably to ninety percent of our dogs are rescues and are mixed breeds. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, so see there that again. You know, it, it just gets better and better yep. when, you, when you're when you talking about this because good begets good begets good. Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we have found people that rescue animals are good people. They have good hearts. So now you take the dog that appreciates mm-hmm. being rescued that wants to give back and the owner who rescued the dog already has a good heart. You put them together and it makes a tremendous team that will go and right. just make people... Makes such a difference. Makes such a difference in so many lives. Do the owners that have the rescue dogs, do they have to pay to get this training for their dog? Do they? Is there a fee for them? The the training for the dog, the, the obedience training is on them. Um, we have an annual membership fee. Once they go through all of the evaluations and orientations and, and all of that, we have a one-time membership or an annual membership fee of $95.00. And that gets them the T-shirt, that gets them a bandana for the dog. It, we have a general liability that covers them while they're visiting. Um, it gets them... Continued education. Continuing education, yeah. a NACI support anytime she is there. Yeah. She places the volunteers in different facilities, matches the volunteers with the facility, which is so important because not all dogs like to visit seniors not all dogs right. like to visit children which we have a separate evaluation for that altogether i imagine you would so yes. and right. takes her time mm-hmm. and places the the team the the dog and the owner, and the owner yeah. at the proper facility so they can make the biggest difference in that facility right well and i think that's great you know because with these um wonderful dogs who provide pet therapy uh it we has been shown that the agitation in someone that has dementia is greatly reduced. The person g- g- improves with their physical therapy, just like the man who 
you know, raised his arm right. and he right. really had to do that um, with a lot of effort, but yes. it caused him to do his exercise, his physical therapy and his rehab. Uh, people who have pets um, and walk them and people have dementia, sometimes they need to walk more and they can walk their dog. <laughs> It, it does a lot of things besides just provide pleasure, right. which in and of itself is wonderful, but yes. there are a lot of other benefits. So we have a caller um, on the line waiting to talk to us, and his name is Robert. Um, are you there, Robert? Yes. Hi, Marcia. How are you? Hi, Robert. Thanks for calling. Hi, Robert. You've been listening to hi, us. We have you? We have here um, Anasi and Joanne and Misha here in the studio, and um, I know you've been listening to us talk about pet therapy and how pet therapy is great for someone with dementia but i understand you have a little twist on that story what what's going on what's your situation well my father was diagnosed with alzheimer's a few years ago when they were living up in ocala uh, my my mother and my father have been married 50 plus years and they're still going strong and my mother is the primary caregiver for my dad. And ever since he's been diagnosed and, and some of the changes that, that have come about during the uh, past few years, she's really put on or taken the burden of being the primary caregiver. Um, my brother does live with them, and he is a great asset. However, my mother's with him, you know, all the time. And, you know, there's, there's those common struggles that she's been having in terms of, um, you know, being that primary caregiver and also making sure that, you know, uh, you know, she maintains a, a, a happy lifestyle and, and along with the family that surrounds them, we do the best we can to lighten that burden for her. Um, you know, my sister will come in and take her uh, on a day away from, from my father while my brother and I will take him for the day and do our thing. So we do the best we can to try to ease that burden it's very um, hard it's very hard for your mom you know she's she's like you say she's the wife and the primary caregiver it's very stressful i'm sure she feels overwhelmed i'm sure she she's um you know feeling maybe even somewhat alone even though the family's there because she does the brunt of it and and you right. you know obviously you know you're attesting to that so wh so what uh, happened okay so while they were living in Ocala, my, my mother had a, a small shih tzu that was absolutely her right-hand uh, man, if you will. I mean, the dog, her and the dog were together all the time for 13, 14 years, mm -hmm. and she had lost um, the dog within the last couple of years, and that was a really big loss for her. That was very painful for her. That was a companion for her, a, a really good, close friend. Mm -hmm. And... My sister, who um, is basically the second in command in terms of being a caregiver for my father and making sure my mother's okay as well, came up with a fantastic idea to maybe replace that dog with a new dog to see if maybe she can find some kind of happiness in that. And we have found that this new dog that has entered into the family only recently, within the last few weeks, has really provided a happiness uh, a lighter um, uh, environment in the house, and it's given my mother another companion, uh, someone, uh, another entity in the house that she welcomes as some another another uh, part of the family that she wants to take care of because she lost that in the past, and now she's gaining it with this new dog. Wow, I that's think that's right. yep. that's a, that's a wonderful story, Robert. Because you know when you said to me well, we thought about replacing the dog. And my first reaction was, well, that's either going to be a really good idea or, or a really, really bad yeah. idea. Uh, because, right. you know, it sometimes could be too much stress and too much mm -hmm. more responsibility on your mom to have to take care of a dog. So I'm really glad that you shared that story because in this case, the dog is more for the caregiver right. than it is for the person with a dementia. Yep. Does your dog enjoy, does your dog, does your dad enjoy the dog also? Oh, uh, he does. And he takes him on walks and Great. they go together. And there's two other cats in the house and they're all getting along. And I mean, this dog is perfect. That's great. It's a small great. Dog. I think it's a fox terrier mix. Okay. It's a rescue dog, and it's just it's perfect. And it's it, it's a lap dog, and it's 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 found a really comfortable, loving home very quickly in, in the atmosphere that it's in. 
Wow. That's great. Great, Robert. That's wonderful news. And that in, that shows that your mom has a heart of gold because that dog found her, too. Absolutely. And we completely believe that. So, yeah, it's a blessing. I, I love that. I love that you shared that because we think of pet therapy as just helping the people that are sick, either mm -hmm. physically right. or cognitively impaired and in this case it's helping the actual caregiver mm -hmm. and and by doing that in turn it's actually helping your dad because Absolutely. your mom is less stressed out your mom is happier which is like you say creating a nicer happier environment for everyone and that is such a wonderful story yeah well i'm glad i was able to share it with you thank you thank so you. very thank much you. and good luck to you and your family and uh keep us posted how that's going once in a while I certainly will. Thanks so Thank much. You. All right. Take care, Robert. Bye, Robert. All right. Thanks. Yeah, to piggyback on that, you know, we see that too. The staff staff really needs it, you know, because they're, they're in there working sometimes overtime, you know, tr caring for these people. And sometimes while the patient isn't really aware of what's going on, the, the staff member is really stressed out. And so when we bring in the dogs, we're bringing them to the staff as well and they you know they take advantage of that too sure mm -hmm. right take a break and and yep. you know have a little fun and enjoyment and and uh it helps everybody yeah and, I, and they're also just like robert um at the facility sometimes the the spouse of the the one that has the disease sits in the room all day long with their spouse all day long they do not leave their side and when we go in it's just some brightness to their day. And we sit and we'll talk with the spouse mm -hmm. as their partner sleeps, rests, wakes up, we're there, everybody's smiling. So when they wake up and see smiles, it gives them something to smile about because they don't want their spouse to sit there all day and be depressed. Right. Mm -hmm. So we also help, like Robert was saying, the mother or the father that 50 some odd years of being together and now seeing this person in bed or sick, it's very hard on the spouse that is still healthy. Yes. So we try to help them and encourage them also. Yeah, that's wonderful. And yeah. it has been shown that after a pet visit in an assisted living or a nursing home, that the patients there tend to improve even when it's mealtime they're yes. they'll eat mm -hmm. more yes. they'll they'll they're happier so therefore they're uh, as a result of maybe not being so depressed because you know when mm -hmm. you're really depressed you know sometimes you just don't even feel Your like eating. Your immune system goes down you know and that's that's. What did you say? The immune system goes down yes. I guess when depression hits. Yes. So just getting happiness in there <laughs> you know in, in their lives even for just a few minutes or just a few times a week really does improve yeah yes. improve and as we walk through the hallways you know we walk and we try to see what rooms we you know want visits or can accept visits and we'll pass a room and all of a sudden we'll hear hello dog dog <laughs> yeah. and they call us and like please come back and visit my mother my father please come here come yeah. here and they drag us into the room and we're happy to go and you are like movie it's, stars it's, you yeah, know it's yeah, like yeah, everybody yeah. wants to oh as soon you're... as the dog enters the building yeah everybody knows like i said tuesdays at four o'clock maya's in the house yes yeah. that's... and every facility they have their their dogs that visit and it's on their calendars because they need consistency mm -hmm. i'm just going to ask you that they you keep the same dogs going to the same places correct yes mm -hmm. and then yes. we, we try once once they get paired up with a facility the volunteers try and keep a consistent schedule mm -hmm. um, yes. for, for the residents too because mm -hmm. that's important for oh, them that's yeah. good that's mm -hmm. good um so how because you are a nonprofit, mm -hmm. do you do fundraisers to raise money for your services we do we do fundraisers we just had um the almost full moon party which was may 19th and it was our first gala that we had and it was so much fun. Yep. We had, um, it was at the Grateful Palette next to Shooters in the, on the waterfront. And yep. we had Ronan Tycho drum troupe there to perform. Mm -hmm. And we had raffles and baskets. And we're going to do another items, one. Yep. Ox Island Auction. We're going to have another one next year. Well, it was very important to to raise these funds Absolutely. to keep the service going. Yeah, you know, because you are a nonprofit and because it does bring so much joy. Mm -hmm. Are you also looking for volunteers? Always. Always. <laughs> Always. You know, because we also have a lot of facility requests that 
at times we can't meet um, because sometimes, you know, the, the volunteers are already set in their schedule with their vo- with their facility. And, and um, you know, it also depends on distance uh, where where the where the facilities are being where are requesting our services. So it really does the more the merrier because <laughs> that that means we're able to fulfill all these requests that are coming in. I can imagine because mm-hmm. once the word gets out, then they've seen Correct. you yes. and yes. your company mm-hmm. and then yes. they're like, well, my mom goes to a daycare center. They would yes, love to absolutely. have you. So yes. we need the volunteers to yes. help that. Are, are there some people that are better as volunteers than others? Is it the more flexibility in their schedule so that they can do mm-hmm. this? Or um, do yeah, you I mean, kind of accept anybody? We, we accept, I mean, it's based, we try and pair them with the best facility. So if we have a volunteer that works 40 hours and only has weekends available, we try and find a facility that will accept the dogs on the weekends. Uh, and sometimes it's sometimes it happens and sometimes it's not so easy. So the volunteer may have to drive a little bit more or maybe um, go on, on the, in the evenings on the weekends, instead, excuse me, in the evenings on the weekdays instead of on the weekends. So uh, we try and match them as well. As I think fast what's as important is that there's a commitment there. Correct. Yes. You know, I mm-hmm. think that if you know, they, there's a desire. But I think if you also have that commitment so that they're going to be there and Absolutely. you know yep. participate which is very important not just mm-hmm. like i'll try this one time right. and and you know we had a, a jim just shared a story jim and and with his dog shelby they go to uh, aston gardens and there was a one one lady there that they've been going there for probably a year almost now. a year yeah and there was this one one resident that would just always say, no, I don't want to visit, get the dog away from me. Uh, and then just last week they had a breakthrough and the lady actually said, okay, I'll, I'll meet Shelby. So that consistency allowed her to see, okay, Shelby's good. It took a year, <laughs> but you know, she was now open Sometimes to the fact. Sometimes it's just baby steps. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so or absolutely. puppy steps. Puppy steps. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Puppy steps. Right. And speaking of puppy steps, we do have a, a, a dog walk. Yes. A fundraiser coming up in February. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Great. that is going to be another exciting event that mm-hmm. we're going to, you know, hopefully recruit new volunteers. We're going to have sponsors. We're going to have contests. We're going to yeah. have a lot of fun. And that's what we do. We try to have a lot of fun with our volunteers, yes. both with the pups and without. And it's a great group of people. Absolutely. So that that's going to be held February 11th. Great. And we'll get the word out. Well, we'll help you get the word Thank out. Yes. I appreciate I it. I know yes. a lot of people have their loved ones at home, their caregivers at, at home that have someone with dementia. You don't do the pet therapy in homes. I understand there's specific reasons why you can't do that. Um, but if someone were in a daycare center mm-hmm. or some other type of Mm -hmm. setting and they wanted to you know ask you to come to share uh how would they do that they would get in touch with an ac and then an ac would well i would get in contact with the facility of course and then make sure that the facility wants the 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 pet therapy in there there are some facilities that don't and they have their reasons but then once once I get in contact with the facility, there is, uh, I like to call it a paper transaction because we have to give them our general liability. We give them all the information on the volunteer and their dog. So you're covered with insurance Correct. and everything. Yes. Correct. Okay. So we, we give them um, not only our general liability form, but the volunteers uh, level two background check, the dog's uh, vaccines. We make sure that they know this is a a good team to to go visit their facility and then once they accept the program i get them in contact with the volunteer and then they go from there Mm -hmm. yeah we make sure that the facility is up to date for aca in case they get inspected by Mm -hmm. a surprise visit from the state Um, they have all the information they need on one piece of paper about any dog that visits their facility from canine assisted therapy meaning that they're up to date on their shots yes they're up to date Mm -hmm. on their shots that the volunteer does have a membership and they are covered uh, covered under our insurance insurance. Um, they know HIPAA they know to wear closed-toed shoes when they go visiting hospital settings and all of those all of those important little details we make sure we educate our volunteers so that they know when they go to a facility what to expect. Mm -hmm. And back to the evaluations, I like to call them a visit on steroids because what you see in in an evaluation 
it's happened in a facility, but maybe not as big as we make it. So it, we have to make sure the dogs can handle every any, situation. any situation that may come about. Speaking of that, I have a question. What about fire drills and Ooh, what about yes. fire alarms? Because oh, a absolutely. lot of times that you may be in a, mm-hmm. in a dementia place yeah, and, you know, and someone might accidentally on purpose yep. pull a fire alarm. Absolutely. Now that. the dogs are are trained to not go crazy? R- react, exactly. Correct. We do have a... a a siren a type siren, of alarm yes. that mm-hmm. we set off in the middle of the evaluation and the dogs can be startled it's the recovery time right how they get back into it okay um the people are more startled and go like, <laughs> ah! they right. freak out and we right. have to make sure they recover also right, right. but we well that's do. why at art and course you know and i'm sure many other places do it we have regular fire drills because we want the residents to get used, get used to, to the, the noise. Right. to the noise, and then we actually go through the process of a fire Absolute. drill mm-hmm. with moving them to a safe place uh, in a calm manner, yeah. so that if there really was a real fire, they would know what to do, what to expect. They would stay calm, yep. and that would be, you know, obviously the same thing for your pet yep. therapy dogs. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's great. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, why don't we share with everyone your contact information? Sure. Well, the easiest um, the easiest email is info at catdogs.org. Or if not, you can um, contact me at Anasi. That's A-N-E-Y-S-I at catdogs.org. Or just go to the website, catdogs.org. <laughs> yes. Our website and has all the information that we've been speaking mm-hmm. about and more. And it's C A T d-o-g-s dot org yep and um it's cat dogs dot org correct but no cats just no dogs cats. That's just dogs. The but, but the reason is <laughs> yeah. because if you take canine assisted, assisted therapy therapy the letters are c-a-t yes thank you for joining thank us you. thank you all thank for you coming thank don't you don't forget Please, watch us next week call art and courts for your free 36 hour day book i'm so glad that you brought me to uh, yes. join us also thank you for having us thank, thank you, you. So thank you very thank much you. and with um everything we've learned you know this is great you go find someone to pet and also don't forget give someone a hug because they need it and so do you Until next time, take care. Thanks for joining us for this week's Caregiver Solutions with Marsha Teal. Join us next week as Marsha, who has 15 years of Alzheimer's disease and dementia care experience, brings you more needed information to help with the care of your loved one. This show can be seen again on caregiversolutions.info and questions can be left on the site, which may be used on the program to help others. See you next week for more Caregiver Solutions. The opinions expressed on the preceding